Hello, hello, Dr. Shane Harada coming at you again with a, this week's health tip. Let me share my screen here real quick. We have an amazing topic for today's discussion. Now, again, as we uh, go into this, uh, want to make sure that you are very well aware that in all of my videos, the FDA does not review, approve, or in any way authorize uh, the information here. And this information is for educational and informational purposes only. Uh, if you have any health conditions, I'm not here to uh, diagnose, treat, cure, anything like that. We are here simply help give you some information and education to help you in the process. So today's discussion, E equals MC squared. Now, last time we discussed spiritual law first, physical law second. Now with that, let's venture into Einstein's uh, understanding then of this because E, as you can see here, energy on the left side equals mc squared. Now m is mass and c squared is the speed of light squared. So c as the speed of light is a constant. Now that constant also represents the speed by which any particle can travel at its maximum speed. So photons of light, this is the speed by which a photon which is the smallest particle of light, can travel. Now, again, from our last discussion, remember, the electron can exhibit characteristics of both light waves as well as particle waves or mass. So the electron actually has the capability of going from one side of this equation and going into energy to the other side of this equation going into mass. Now that right there is a principle that's not even taught at the, at the levels of physics in college. That right there was never taught to me. I had to begin to understand that. It's taught in other areas, but it's all separated and it's not brought together. So let's bring this together here. Why is this principle so important? E equals MC squared. E as in energy, again, is what fills space outside of our body as well as inside of our body. In the universe and cosmology to the very cellular and even further into the atomic levels into what the particles we call, we call quarks and then even smaller particles that are called plonks. It's amazing that even these very smallest particles and then even going into the light and everything that is on the electromagnetic spectrum follows this law equals MC squared. Now, as we transition and know and understand that the electron can go both sides, okay? Now, as it does that, let's look into E equals spiritual, because that's the energetic side. And when we look into quantum physics, we're going to go into this a little bit further today. It blew my mind when I first heard about this, and I began to put this together. The M is mass, which again is a particle, and the mass is potentially known but even in quantum physics, it's not been necessarily known as the mass. So the physical side has been dealing with some guesswork here. The C is a constant, the fastest speed that a particle can travel, even a photon. Now, entanglement. Entanglement is a principle, even a law in quantum physics where you can bind two particles in an energetic way. And this is so important to understand at an energetic level because it proved and showed that when entanglement happens and when these two particles are bound with entanglement, they act in unity as one particle. 
And the experiment was done back in the 70s with the uh, accel electron particle accelerator and how they could get electrons. And what they did was they figured out how to entangle these two electrons and they bound them together in this energy. Then they sent them apart miles and miles. I don't know the exact distance, but uh, from my understanding, it was hundreds of miles apart. And then they affected one and made it disappear. And the other one at the very exact instant, no time in between, disappeared at exactly the same time frame. Now, why is that important? Because this is showing that they are one particle, not two. And if there was a difference in those particles and there was a time delay, then they would have been two separate particles, but they behaved as one. Now, with that law of entanglement and knowing the entanglement, this gets us into electrons being entangled together. And when the electrons are entangled together and put into a physical substance, let's go into DNA, for instance, because we have electrons, protons, neutrons entangled. Now they become elements, which the elements become entangled into molecules. The molecules become entangled now into larger compositions and into chemistry. And as we work with that chemistry and come into a, even a level of DNA, DNA is amazing. We're going to discuss this even further because all of this comes to how we interact, not only with ourselves, but with the universe, with each other. It affects everything that we're doing. We just haven't understood it at this level and we're not taught in our society that this is how much control we have on our own environment. We are taught that control comes from external. I am helping to understand and I want to help you understand that with this, we can literally affect anything and everything we want to in our lives. This is how the law of attraction, these are the very foundations in the law of attraction. And let me rephrase that because we're taught the law of attraction. If I may rephrase it as the law of generation, generating, generating energy, generating health, generating our relationships, generating everything that we create in our environment. And it comes to this law, the law of entanglement and the electron. Now, here's an experiment that they did with, um, with DNA. And they did this at a military base, a military installation where they had uh, created what's called a Faraday cage on a in a building that's on a military base and a Faraday cage study that a little bit it's a cage or a box where no electro electromagnetic frequencies can penetrate that box and what it does is it creates a clear environment almost if you will like a vacuum space where you can't uh, interfere with outside electromagnetic energies so they made this building a Faraday cage inside the building they made a room inside that building a faraday cage and then inside that room they did a, another faraday cage in which they put a liver now they severed part of this liver and put it in a separate room in the building again faraday cage around the building that separate room has its own faraday cage and inside that room a microwave is a good example of a small Faraday cage so that the electromagnetic energies don't come out of that box and affect us, as well as the energies don't go into that box and affect what's inside of it. So inside of this Faraday cage, inside of a Faraday cage, inside of a Faraday cage, they have two portions of this liver. When they, when they um, affected and it didn't matter which side they affected. They could affect the smaller cutoff portion or they could affect the larger portion. Both sides or both parts of that liver began to vibrate and began to respond in exactly the same way. This then is how a mother can be connected with a child having that DNA connection 
having that entanglement and the electromagnetic connection. And this is how prayer works. This is how spiritual law works is in this law of entanglement. I have used up my 10 minutes. I hope this has given you some information that now start to think about this in relationship to what we shared last week and in relationship to what we share with herbs and components that we want to use to build our immune system, vitamins and minerals, how we affect our environment with other people. We're going to go further into this. And I love you. It's been amazing. And I hope that this has been something very enlightening for you. Have a fantastic week. And we're going to talk some more next week. Take care. Bye-bye.